HarperCollins and Harper Audio present Warriors Super Edition Leopard Stars Honor by Aaron Hunter Performed by McLeod Andrews Prologue The bone hill glowed beneath the moon. The heaped carcasses, stripped of flesh, reflected its clean white light. For them, the worst was over now. Leopard Star pressed back a shiver. The leaf bare chill reminded her of her own bones jutting beneath her pelt. It felt like it had been a long time since the prey rich moons of green leaf. She dared not lift her gaze to silver pelt, nor did she risk catching any of her clanmates' eyes. They had no choice but to watch. River Clan was part of Tiger Clan now, and outnumbered in this clearing by former Shadow Clan cats. Leopard Star had made a deal with the fierce Tom. They must follow Tiger Star's rules. Stone Fur stood in front of the Dark Warrior while Featherpaw and Stormpaw huddled behind him, their eyes wide with fear. The apprentices had been imprisoned by Tiger Star for being the kits of a Thunder Clan Tom and a River Clan Queen. As Stone Fur flattened his ears against his head, Tiger Star narrowed his eyes to slits. I will give you a chance to show your loyalty to Tiger Clan, the Dark Warrior told him. Kill these two half clan apprentices. Leopard Star's blood ran cold. Surely Tiger Star only meant to banish them? How could he order a warrior to kill his own clanmates? And they were so young. It made no sense. Stonefur was half clan too. Leopard Star felt dread rising in her chest and throat like hot, scalding bile. Was this really what Star Clan wanted? Was this the only way for the clans to become strong? Stonefur was battered and starved from his confinement, but as he turned his gaze to Leopard Star, his eyes seemed to bore right through her. I take orders from you, he growled darkly. You must know this is wrong. What do you want me to do? For a moment, Leopard Star could only stare at her deputy. What do you want me to do? What could she say? She risked a glance at Tiger Star and was chilled by the hatred in his eyes. Not only for Stonefur, but for her. If I say no, she wondered, how much longer will I be alive to protect my clan? These are difficult times, she replied finally, struggling to keep her voice steady. What would Tiger Star say? She felt sick. As we fight for survival, we must be able to count on every one of our clanmates. There is no room for divided loyalties. Do as Tiger Star tells you. Star Clan, forgive me. Stonefur held her gaze for a moment, and she could see that something had changed inside him. Whereas he had turned to her with hope, he now looked deeply disappointed. He took in a deep breath and turned to face the apprentices, who cowered in fear. After what seemed like an eternity, Stormfur gave a tiny nod at the apprentices and turned back to look at the Tiger Clan leader. You'll have to kill me first, Tiger Star. Leopard Star clenched her teeth to keep from wailing in despair. Stormfur, don't do this. Tiger Star glared at the blue-gray Tom, his tail twitching with menace. He signaled to his accomplice, Darkstripe. Kill him. Leopard Star's breath caught in her throat. She had to stop this. But she hesitated. If she did, she would seem weak. They'd be back where they'd started, at the mercy of the river and the forest and the other clans. She had no choice but to follow through. And yet the words ached to be spoken. Stop, stop this now. She pressed them back. She could not back down. She tried not to flinch, horror shrilling through every hair on her pelt as Darkstripe leaped at Stonefur. 
Though battered and exhausted, Stonefur managed to haul his attacker to the ground and dig his claws into the warrior's throat. Pride seemed to move deep inside her as she watched her deputy fight fiercely against the cruel Tabby. Kill him, Leopard Star found herself willing Stonefur on. Then she froze. She couldn't think like that. This had to happen. The half clan cats must die. Once this was over, Tiger Star's vision for a single clan that united all the warriors of the forest could prevail. It was the only way River Clan could survive the floods and fires that had battered them like whirling claws over and over again, keeping them hungry in leaf bear, and the two leg incursions that made them vulnerable every green leaf. This was the only way forward. It was the choice she had made when she'd agreed River Clan and Shadow Clan should join together to become Tiger Clan. Every instinct within her was trying to pull her gaze away from the fight, but she told herself that the least she owed her deputy was to watch the sacrifice he was making for the good of River Clan. Finish it. Tiger Star flicked his ears at Blackfoot, and his deputy shot forward and dragged Stonefur off Darkstripe. Together, the vicious warriors turned on the River Clan deputy, and as Darkstripe held him down, Blackfoot scored his claws across Stonefur's throat. Stonefur struggled, then fell still, his blood staining the ground. Around the clearing, Tiger Star's warriors yowled jubilantly. Leopard Star's clanmates eyed each other fearfully before joining in, their calls barely audible at first, but soon rising to match the others. Only Featherpaw and Stormpaw remained silent. Leopard Star was aware of Featherpaw's horrified gaze lifting from Stonefur's body and fixing on her like a judgment. She could not meet it, but looked across the clearing at the heavy bulrushes swaying darkly beneath the moon. She hardly heard Tiger Star announcing that Featherpaw and Stormpaw would not die today, but would return to their prison and she stood stiff and silent as Tiger Clan melted away, heading back to the camp. Only when the clearing had emptied did her numbness begin to ease. In its place, doubt crawled beneath her pelt. The scent of stone fur's blood flooded her mouth, bathing her tongue with its sour tang. She padded reluctantly forward and stopped beside his body. Mudfur had asked her whether joining Tiger Clan was the right thing to do. There had always been four clans in the forest. Why should that change? She'd told him they needed to be stronger, to be the strongest. And he'd shaken his head in disappointment. There are things more important than being strong. His words rang in her head as she leaned down and touched her nose to Stonefur's cold and matted pelt. How did I get here? She hadn't always been this heartless. Even a few moons ago, she would have defended Stonefur with her life. The thought pricked her heart like a thorn. Every choice she'd made in her life had brought her closer to this moment. Had she led RiverClan along the wrong path? Leopard Star lifted her head. She couldn't lose her nerve now. Mudfur was old. He'd been a warrior under Crooked Star, and then a medicine cat. He'd been born in a different time, when all River Clan had to do was dip a paw into the river to scoop out a fish. He didn't understand that the forest had changed, that life was harder, that there were now only difficult choices to be made. Leopard Star squared her shoulders against the cold as clouds began to trail across Silver Pelt. Tiger Clan would make her warriors strong. They would never again have to give up territory. They would never again go to their nests with empty bellies. Other cats would fear them. If her clanmates couldn't be strong enough to face the future she had planned, she would have to be strong for them. It was the only way to keep them safe. Chapter One. Leopard Kit jumped to her paws. Let's play hide and seek. She looked around eagerly at her denmates. They'd been lying around for ages, 
Frog Kit, Sun Kit, and Loud Kit had been drowsing in the bright green leaf sunshine after sharing a trout that Gray Pool had fished from the river. Black Kit, Sky Kit, and Reed Kit had been giving their faces and paws a thorough wash. Leopard Kit had gotten so bored that she'd wondered whether to try hunting the large, lazy dragonfly humming among the reeds behind them. But a game would be more fun. Her pelt tingled excitedly as the others scrambled to their paws. Sedgekit swished her long tabby tail. Alby Hunter, she dropped onto the ground and pressed her paws over her muzzle. Every cat hide. Keep your eyes closed, Sedgekit, Leopard Kit told her. You're not allowed to look until we've all hidden. If I've got my eyes closed, how will I know when you've all hidden? Sedgekit's mew was muffled. Shimmerpelt was weaving willow stems among the reeds to strengthen the den wall. I'll tell you, she called. Leopard Kit whisked her tail, happy that her foster mother was watching. Make sure she doesn't peek, she told Shimmerpelt. Shimmerpelt nodded gravely. Of course. And give me time to hide properly. That's cheating, Sky Kit sniffed. She's not allowed to help you. Leopard Kit puffed out her chest. It's not helping, she mewed. It's just making sure Sedge Kit sticks to the rules. Loud Kit looked indignant. Sedge Kit always sticks to the rules. She doesn't even cheat at Moss Ball, Reed Kit chimed in. Take that back, Leopard Kit. Leopard Kit looked at them. The three kits always defended each other. It must be because they were litter mates and not just nest mates. She wondered if Sky Kit and Black Kit would stick up for her like that if Shimmerpelt were her real mother. Hurry up, Frog Kit plucked impatiently at the hot, sandy earth. Sun Kit flicked her tail at him. Leopard Kit's just making sure it's fair. Leopard Kit talks too much, Frog Kit complained. She can talk as much as she likes, Sun Kit snipped back. Leopard Kit blinked at her friend gratefully. Sun Kit stuck up for her, even though they weren't littermates or nestmates. Maybe some cats were just kinder than others. She turned away from Sky Kit. Let's go. Charging away, she sped across the clearing. Her paws burned with the effort. The other kits were older and bigger. If she didn't try her best, they'd outrun her, and she wanted to make sure she found a good hiding place before they stole them all. Pike Tooth looked up at her from the mallow leaves he was helping brambleberries spread in the sunshine to dry. You're faster than a fish, he purred as she streaked past. Leopard Kit glanced over her shoulder. Frog Kit and Sun Kit were pushing their way into the sedge next to the elder's den. Black Kit had scrambled into the willow tree that overlooked the warrior's den. Loud Kit and Reed Kit were heading for the shadows between its roots. Sky Kit had stopped in the middle of the sunny clearing and was looking around, clearly scanning the camp for a place to hide. Over here. Otter Splash's hushed mew made Leopard Kit turn. The white and ginger she-cat was Sedge Kit, Loud Kit, and Reed Kit's mother, and she was outside the nursery with Lake Shine. The queens had been sharing tongues while their kits played, but Otter Splash was leaning forward now, beckoning Leopard Kit toward her with a nod. Leopard Kit hurried over. Hide behind us, Otter Splash whispered. Lake Shine shifted to let Leopard Kit slide between them. We'll pretend we haven't seen you. Leopard Kit ducked down behind the two queens as they pressed together, blocking Leopard Kit from view. Shimmerpelt's mew rang out over the clearing. The prey is hidden, she called to Sedge Kit. Leopard Kit quivered with anticipation. Would Sedge Kit find her? Be as quiet as you can, Otter Splash warned Leopard Kit in a whisper. Sedge Kit is a good hunter. I'm good prey, Leopard Kit mewed back. Lake Shine's pelt twitched. Sedge Kit's coming this way. Leopard Kit held her breath, fighting the urge to peek out. Sedge Kit's mew sounded in front of the queens. Have you seen Leopard Kit? Otter Splash flicked her muzzle toward the medicine den. Have you looked over there? She's probably hiding behind the apprentice's den, Lake Shine added. The queen's fur tickled Leopard Kit's nose, and she held back a sneeze and pressed her belly harder against the earth. 
The hot green leaf sun warmed her golden dappled pelt, and her ears were so hot she had to force them not to twitch as Sedge Kit's paw steps pattered back and forth in front of the queens. Are you sure you haven't seen her? Sedge Kit sounded unconvinced. Leopard Kit could picture her den mate tasting the air suspiciously, and wished now she'd cleaned the fishy smell of the carp from her whiskers like the others. We're sure. Lake Shine's pelt brushed Leopard Kit's nose once more. This time it tickled until Leopard Kit could not hold back the sneeze. Sedge Kit darted around Lake Shine, and her pelt fluffed as she spotted Leopard Kit. You lied! As her den mate glared indignantly at Lake Shine, Leopard Kit saw a chance to escape. She pelted across the clearing, looking back over her shoulder to see if Sedge Kit was following. It doesn't count unless you catch! She crashed into a wall of thick fur, lost her footing, and tumbled between four hefty paws. A pale brown belly blocked the sky, and she rolled out from beneath it and scrambled to her paws. Sorry, crooked jaw. The huge warrior blinked at her warmly. Are you okay? But Leopard Kit was looking back at the nursery. Sedge Kit was charging toward her. If she catches me, I'll lose, she gasped. Crooked Jaw seemed to understand. He grabbed her scruff between his teeth and swung her up onto his shoulders. Hang on, he told her, his deep mew reverberating through his pelt. Leopard Kit dug her claws into his thick fur and clung on as Crooked Jaw bounded away. Sedge Kit chased after him. Hey, she squealed crossly. That's cheating. Leopard Kit lifted her muzzle from Crooked Jaw's thick ruff and glimpsed Sky Kit crouching beside the wall of the apprentice's den. Her brown tabby pelt was hardly visible in the shadow, but Leopard Kit could see her green eyes flashing. Sky Kit, she called her name as loudly as she could so that Sedge Kit could hear. I can see you. She pointed her muzzle toward the apprentice's den, relief swamping her as Sedge Kit pricked her ears and veered away toward Sky Kit's hiding place. That's not fair. Leopard Kit could hear Sky Kit's outraged mew as Crooked Jaw carried her away. She'd escaped. She felt a rush of joy, but then Crooked Jaw pulled up suddenly, and she had to dig her claws deeper into his fur as he scrambled to a halt at the camp entrance. Don't stop, she wailed. What if Sedge Kit came after her again? But Crooked Jaw was already nodding a greeting to the afternoon hunting patrol as it filed back into camp. Leopard Kit's heart leaped as she saw her father heading it. Mud fur held a shiny silver carp in his jaws. Behind him, Oak Heart, Beetle Nose, and Echo Mist were carrying river prey too. Mud fur dropped the carp and nodded toward Leopard Kit, his eyes shining. That's a pretty big tick on your shoulder he told Crooked Jaw. I'm not a tick, she slithered from Crooked Jaw's back. It's me, Leopard Kit. She wove around him and ducked through the cool shadow beneath his belly. He purred as she emerged into the sunshine once more. What have you been doing, he asked her. Playing hide and seek. She nodded toward the apprentice's den where Sedge Kit was nosing Sky Kit triumphantly from the shadows. Sky Kit shot Leopard Kit an angry look. Come on, Sky Kit, Sedge Kit whisked her tail. Help me find the others. She steered Sky Kit toward the warrior's den. Did you get caught? Mudfur asked Leopard Kit. Crooked Jaw helped me get away. Leopard Kit puffed out her chest. Thanks, Crooked Jaw. You shouldn't indulge her, Mudfur told him. She needs to stand on her own four paws. Echo Mist purred. You're a fine one to talk, Mudfur, she nudged his catch with her paw. We'd have been back before sun high if you hadn't insisted on bringing a carp home for Leopard Kit. Leopard Kit nuzzled Mudfur's shoulder. That's my favorite, she purred. Thanks. As Mudfur nuzzled her back, Sedge Kit called across the clearing. Come on, Leopard Kit. She was beside the warrior's den, her tail high as Black Kit slithered down the willow tree, and Loud Kit and Reed Kit squeezed out from among the roots. I found every cat. Black Kit's going to be hunted this time. Mudfur whisked Leopard Kit forward with his tail. Go and play, he mewed. Okay. She blinked at him, happy he was back in camp. 
but make sure no one takes my carp from the fresh kill pile while I'm playing. As Leopard Kit turned away, she heard Echo Mist's affectionate mew. You spoil that kit, Mudfur. It doesn't seem to do her any harm, Mudfur purred back. Leopard Kit reached her denmates. She looked between them, searching their faces for any signs that they were annoyed at her for winning, or for giving away Sky Kit's position. No cat can use the same hiding place again, right? Yeah, Sky Kit purred, as if excited to play again. Leopard Kit was relieved to see that the brown tabby she kit did not seem angry with her. You ready, Black Kit? Black Kit dropped into a crouch and covered his muzzle with his paws. Sun Kit and Frog Kit darted away, heading toward the elder's den. Loud Kit followed Sedge Kit and Reed Kit as they raced for the thick sedge growing at the far end of the clearing. Leopard Kit glanced around, wondering where to hide. Would Hailstar mind if she hid in his den? Maybe Brambleberry would let her hide in the herb store. Come with me, Sky Kit whispered. I know a great place. Okay. Leopard Kit's heart quickened. She raced after her nest mate to the reeds edging the camp. The ground was marshy here, and soon she was splashing through shallow water, mud between her claws, as Sky Kit pushed her way deeper and deeper into the reed bed. She began to slow. Mudfur would be mad at her if he knew she was playing this close to the river, when she'd only just learned to swim. Wait, Sky Kit turned as she called out and waded back toward her. Leopard Kit saw a flash of annoyance in her nestmate's eyes. We shouldn't go so close to the riff. Before she could finish, Sky Kit grabbed her scruff with her forepaws and pushed her head under. Water rushed up her nose and into her mouth. Panic pulsed beneath Leopard Kit's pelt. She thrashed her paws in the water, trying to struggle free from Sky Kit's grip. But Sky Kit was two moons older and stronger, and she suddenly realized she was helpless. Flailing desperately, she fought the instinctive urge to breathe as her pounding heart tried to claw its way out of her chest. Then Sky Kit let go. Leopard Kit pushed up with her paws and burst dripping from the water. She shook her head, and then her body sprang water among the reeds. She coughed, regaining her breath, and then glared at Sky Kit. What was that? She could hardly believe Sky Kit could be so nasty. Sky Kit glared at her. That's for telling Sedge Kit where I was hiding. I only told her because she was chasing me, Leopard Kit bristled. You didn't have to try to drown me. Water was still running from her nose and whiskers. Don't be so dramatic, Sky Kit snapped. Stop thinking you're so special just because every cat makes a fuss over you. You still act like a newborn kit. That's why Black Kid and I don't like playing with you. We only do it because Shimmerpelt makes us. Hurt pierced Leopard Kit's heart. Don't like playing with me? They only played with her because they had to? She bristled. It wasn't fair. She'd thought they were friends. I'm going to tell Shimmerpelt what you did, she murmured, keeping her jaws almost closed to make sure she didn't wail like a newborn. Then you'll be in real trouble. And it'll serve you right, Sky Kit sniffed. Go on, Leopard Kit, she mewed. Run away and tattle. That's what newborn kits always do. Leopard Kit could hardly believe her ears. Why was Sky Kit being so spiteful? Her heart pounded in her chest. Sky Kit hadn't finished. You only get special treatment because Bright Sky died, she mewed. If you hadn't killed your own mother, the rest of the clan wouldn't even bother with you. I didn't kill my mother, she hissed back, feeling her claws stretching out. That's not what I heard around camp. Sky Kit's green eyes twinkled with a malicious glee. I heard your mother was sick when you were born. What could have made her sick? Probably a rotten kit, that's what. Don't say that. Leopard Kit wanted to shut Sky Kit up and hurt her back. She lashed out, swinging her paw at the brown tabby's muzzle, but Sky Kit blocked it with her own paw and cuffed Leopard Kit around the ear. Leopard Kit staggered under the weight of the blow. You're going to end up in the dark forest, Sky Kit snarled, with all the other murderers. Leopard Kit stared at her, the water around her paws suddenly feeling like ice. It seemed to drag her down until she had to struggle to stay standing. Sky Kit pushed past her and splashed away between the reeds. 
Leopard Kit opened her mouth to call after her, to ask if Sky Kit had really heard cats say such terrible things. But the words didn't come. She was afraid of what Sky Kit would say. As the sun shone over the camp the next morning, Leopard Kit still felt the sting of Sky Kit's words. They hadn't spoken since. And last night in their nest, Leopard Kit had wriggled into the warm space behind Shimmerpelt, as far away from Sky Kit and Black Kit as she could get. She'd enjoyed sleeping without their annoying paws poking her flank or their stupid tails flicking her ears. She didn't want to be anywhere near them, now that she knew how they really felt about her. Crouching in the shadow of the sedge that ringed the camp, Leopard Kit watched them playing moss ball with Loud Kit, Sun Kit, and Reed Kit, while Frog Kit chased Sedge Kit around the warrior's den. Come and play, Sun Kit called to her as she sent the moss ball high into the air, and Loud Kit and Black Kit leaped to see who could catch it first. Leopard Kit tucked her paws tighter beneath her. There was no way she was going to join in and spoil their fun. She glanced at Sky Kit. Her nestmate was looking at her, but as Leopard Kit caught her eye, she quickly looked away. Was that guilt in her gaze? I hope so, Leopard Kit huffed. Come on, Sun Kit was bounding toward her. Join in, you must be bored sitting there by yourself. I'm too tired to play, Leopard Kit told her. She didn't want to confide in Sun Kit her real reason for not playing. She didn't want to repeat Sky Kit's words. You're going to end up in the dark forest with all the other murderers. Her pelt felt hot just remembering them. Sun Kit stopped in front of her and frowned. Are you sure? She asked. I'm sure. Leopard Kit faked a yawn to convince Sun Kit just how tired she was. Sun Kit looked at her for another moment, then flicked her tail. Join in after you've rested, she mewed, and headed back toward the others breaking into a run as the moss ball rolled toward her. Leopard Kit watched her go, her legs twitching like she was going to stand up and run after Sun Kit, until a fresh wave of hurt pushed her back down, dragging into her mind all the thoughts that had kept her awake the night before. Was Sky Kit right? Had she really killed her mother, her littermates? Mudfur never really spoke of it. Was that what the rest of the clan thought of her? Leopard Kit glanced toward Shimmerpelt and Otter Splash, who were dragging the nests from the nursery to air them in the sunshine. Do they think it's my fault that Bright Sky died? She'd been told that her mother had been sick, but no cat had ever said a queen could be made sick by her kit. That sounded impossible. But why would Sky Kit say she had if it was impossible? Her thoughts chased each other, like fish swimming around and around. Am I bad? The idea made her queasy. She didn't want to be bad, but what if she couldn't help it? There had to be some reason that Bright Sky had died. Other Kit's mothers didn't die, only hers. Leopard Kit? Mudfur's mew took her by surprise. She looked up and saw him stop beside her. Worry clouded his yellow eyes. Why are you sitting by yourself? Why aren't you playing with the other Kits? She blinked at him and got to her paws. He'd know the truth. Her ears twitched nervously. Should she ask him if she had killed Bright Sky? What if he said yes? He blinked at her anxiously. You're upset, aren't you? She looked at her paws. It was something some cat said, she mewed. Who? It doesn't matter. There was no point blaming Sky Kit. If she thought it, the rest of the clan must believe it too. What did they say? Mudfur pressed gently. Leopard Kit hesitated, her heart pounding. She needed to know. If it was true, she'd just have to accept it and try to make up for what she'd done by being the best warrior she could be and protecting her clanmates. She didn't want to end up in the dark forest. Mudfur ran his tail gently along her spine. Tell me, she met his gaze. Did I kill Bright Sky? His eyes widened. It made her nervous. He looked like he didn't want to have this discussion. Because it's true? No, Leopard Kit. He mewed, pressing his muzzle to her head. Of course you didn't kill Bright Sky. He pulled away and looked at her. 
Your mother was sick. Because of me? No, little one. It was just a sickness. Brambleberry couldn't help her. Your littermates died with her. None of it was your fault. His eyes began to glisten. I'm just thankful that Star Clan spared you. Really? She realized that she could breathe again. She didn't know she'd stopped. She searched her father's gaze. He was telling the truth. She could see it in his round, anxious eyes. Have the other kits been taunting you about it? Mudford didn't wait for an answer. He'd clearly guessed why she'd asked him about Bright Sky. You shouldn't listen to them, he mewed. They're probably jealous because you're special. Am I? Leopard Kit looked at him hopefully. Sky Kit said I wasn't. She said I was just different. You are special, Mudfur mewed. I think Star Clan saved you for a reason. A reason? Leopard Kit's thoughts whirled. What could it be? Not long after Bright Sky died, Mudfur went on. When you were still a tiny kit, I had a dream. Bright Sky told me to take good care of you because you'd be important to River Clan one day. How? Leopard Kit blinked at him eagerly. She liked the idea of being important. She didn't say, Mudfur answered. She just said that one day you'd be important to River Clan, to all the clans, he added. All the clans? Leopard Kit's ears twitched with surprise. Being important to all the clans sounded hard. Mudfur's gaze had wandered, as though he was picturing his lost mate. That dream, along with my love for you, is what gave me the strength to go on. Even though I miss Bright Sky so much, it still hurts to remember her. He blinked away the sadness glistening in his eyes, and focused on Leopard Kit once more. I think one day you'll show us all why Star Clan spared you. Leopard Kit fluffed out her fur. Star Clan had saved her for a reason. She couldn't wait for Sky Kit to see her save all the clans. Can I start my warrior training early? She asked Mudfur. She had so much to learn. There wasn't a moment to waste. You're too small, his pelt prickled along his spine. And being a warrior is harder than you think. You've still got some growing up to do. But I have to save the clans. Leopard Kit frowned. Didn't Mudfur understand? The clans were depending on her. She curled her claws into the earth. If Star Clan had saved her for a reason, then she needed to learn every battle move and hunting skill that she could. She was going to become the noblest, strongest, bravest warrior River Clan had ever known. Chapter 2 Leopard Kit shook the water from her paws and shuddered. Crossing the stepping stones had been scarier than she'd imagined. They were so far apart, and the river had swirled hungrily between them, as though it were hoping she'd fall in. But this was the only way out of camp, and she didn't want to try swimming. She hurried into the reeds before anyone could see her, and hoped none of the other kits would wonder where she'd gone. She wove between the stems, keeping out of sight. Gray pool and willow breeze had already followed the shore as far as the bulrushes and had taken a path away from the river. She'd overheard them planning to hunt frogs in the water meadow. If Mudfur refused to teach her any hunting skills before she became a paw, then she'd have to learn by herself. She wasn't ready to catch fish yet, but frog hunting would be a useful skill, and her mentor would be impressed by how much she knew when she started her training. Gray Pool and Willow Breeze were following a narrow path, and Leopard Kit shadowed them through the reeds until they opened onto a wide stretch of grass. She watched them cross the water meadow to a puddle that shimmered like a heat haze beneath the hot sun. They began to sniff around the edge. Gray Pool dropped suddenly into a crouch, her ears pricking. Willow Breeze froze a tail length behind. As a frog leaped into the shallow pool, Gray Pool lunged after it. Leopard Kit blinked. She was so fast. The frog hadn't even hit the water before Graypool caught it and hooked it toward her. With a swift bite, she killed it and sat back on her haunches. Good catch, Willow Breeze mewed, 
but her gaze was already scanning the next pool. Leopard Kit leaned farther forward, her pelt tingling. She wanted to try lunging and throwing her paws out just like Graypool had, but she'd make the reeds rattle and the warriors might hear her. She'd practice later, when she was back in camp. She knew that if she tried, she could be as fast as Graypool, perhaps faster if she practiced enough. Willow Breeze was stalking toward the next pool. Leopard Kit noticed how the warrior's ears were half flattened against her head, and how she kept her belly low and her tail skimming the grass. The silver tabby moved one paw at a time, placing each gently on the grass as she drew herself forward. Leopard Kit tried to mimic her, moving between the reeds as slowly and silently as she could, watching Willow Breeze out of the corner of her eye as she copied every careful step. Her attention was fixed so intently on Willow Breeze that when the rushes swished behind her, she barely noticed. Only when a familiar scent washed her tongue did her heart lurch. She jerked around as snowy fur flashed between the stems and White Fang pushed the reeds aside with his broad shoulders. He stared at her sternly. What are you doing out of camp? She gave him an apologetic mew. I'm sorry, she nodded toward Graypool and Willow Breeze. I came to watch them. I thought the meadow would be safe to learn how to hunt. White Fang grunted. Nowhere outside camp is safe for a kit, he murmured. You don't even know how to stay low and keep out of sight. But I'm trying to learn, she mewed earnestly. Look, she began to copy Willow Breeze's stalking technique once more. White Fang watched her. Your tail's too high, he stepped toward her. When you're hunting, your tail should never be higher than your spine. It will give you away. Leopard Kit let her tail droop. Is that better? Now you're dragging it along the ground, White Fang nosed the tip a little higher. There, he stepped back. Try again. Leopard Kit began to stalk once more, remembering to flatten her ears. Keep your ears from twitching, White Fang told her. That's right. Now crouch a little lower. Yes, that's good. Excitement began to fizz in Leopard Kit's fur. She was training like a real paw. Let the air flow over your tongue. White Fang added. Leopard Kit opened her mouth. The scent of wet soil and damp stems filled it. She was surprised to find they smelled mustier than the reeds around the camp. Were other smells different too? A thought popped into her mind. Does live prey smell the same as dead prey? She asked. She'd only smelled the dead prey that patrols brought back from hunting. That's a smart question. White Fang looked impressed. Live prey smells sweeter and more delicate, but a frog still smells like a frog, and a fish smells like a fish. Can we look for a live frog so I can learn what it smells like? Leopard Kit looked at him hopefully. White Fang's gaze lit up as though he wanted to show her, and she pricked her ears excited. Then he frowned. Mudfur will be mad if he thinks I've been training you, he mewed. He jerked his muzzle toward the camp. I'd better get you home. Leopard Kit dug her paws into the marshy ground. Can't we train just a little more? If Mudfur notices you're missing. You could tell him I'm ready to be a paw, she pressed hopefully. He'd listen to you. Mudfur doesn't listen to any cat when it comes to his kit, White Fang mewed. Come on, we should head back. Leopard Kit sighed. Are you going to tell him I sneaked out of camp? White Fang pushed the reeds apart and nodded her through the gap he'd made. I'll have to, he told her. You smell like meadow water. Leopard Kit padded past him. She was still determined to learn as much as she could while she was out of camp. Does meadow water smell different from river water? He padded after her. Taste the air, he mewed. She let it stream over her tongue. It was tinged with sweetness. As they pushed their way from the reeds and padded along the riverbank, he spoke again. Taste it now. She opened her mouth, surprised she hadn't noticed the difference earlier. Meadow water tastes like grass, she mewed. River water tastes like stone. Exactly, White Fang mewed. Of course, it changes with the weather. How? When it rains and the river's churned up, it tastes more like mud, White Fang mewed. And in Leaf Bear, it changes again. The cold sharpens the scent of the river, and the meadow tastes of peat. 
Leopard Kit's pelt prickled with eagerness. There was so much to learn. She hardly noticed they'd reached the stepping stones. Her chest tightened as she saw them. Since Sky Kit's cruel attack, she'd felt less confident about swimming than she had before. She shivered. Even now, as she saw the river swirling around the stones, she could feel the panic that had gripped her when water had flooded into her mouth and nose. White Fang paused beside her. It's probably safer if I carry you across. He grabbed her scruff between his teeth and scooped her up. Her relief at not having to cross the stones turned to hot embarrassment as he carried her all the way into camp. Sun Kit and Frog Kit were chasing a butterfly across the clearing. They stopped and stared at her in surprise as White Fang put her down. Where have you been? Sun Kit mewed, her eyes wide. Leopard Kit stuck out her chin. I went for a walk. Come on, White Fang swished her forward with his tail. You'd better explain yourself to Hailstar. Hailstar? She glanced at White Fang. Did he have to report her to the River Clan leader? But- It's best to tell him now, White Fang mewed. He steered her toward the leader's den, woven among the roots of a willow tree. Leopard Kit's legs stiffened. White Fang gently stroked her flank with his tail. Go on, he'll find out anyway. You know how quickly news gets around the clan. Leopard Kit wondered what the punishment would be for not going to see Hailstar, for turning and running away, and only coming back when this had been forgotten. But White Fang was right. Hailstar was going to find out. And, she thought, I'm going to convince my clanmates I'm ready to begin my apprenticeship. I should act like a paw and show some responsibility. She puffed out her chest and patted ahead of him as though she wanted to see the clan leader. Mudfur looked up from the fresh kill pile as they passed. He'd been rummaging for prey. Leopard Kit? Where are you going? Leopard Kit felt a wave of dismay. Hi, Mudfur. She tried to sound bright. It wasn't like she'd done anything really wrong. She'd just been trying to learn. But Mudfur's questioning gaze had switched to White Fang. Has something happened? He asked the snowy warrior anxiously. I caught her near the water meadow, White Fang told him. Outside camp? Mudfur hurried toward them, pelt ruffling. I'm taking her to see Hailstar, White Fang told him, to explain herself. Leopard Kit's fur was prickling self-consciously. There's not much to explain, she mewed. I wanted to learn how to hunt frogs, that's all. White Fang nudged her forward, and she padded to the entrance of Hailstar's den. Mudfur was following. She could feel his gaze burning her pelt. Wait there, White Fang told her as they reached the root den, and he disappeared through the moss trailing over the entrance. Leopard Kit glanced guiltily at her father. His eyes were glittering with worry. What in Star Clan were you doing outside camp? Nothing bad happened, she told him. I was just- Come in, Leopard Kit, Hailstar's mew sounded through the moss. She hesitated and Mudfur swished her forward with his tail. Go on, he mewed. Paws pricking nervously, she nosed her way inside, relieved when Mudfur followed. Hailstar was sitting beside his nest, his gray pelt dark in the shadowy den. White Fang stood beside him, looking grave. She braced herself for a scolding, but Hailstar was looking at her thoughtfully. It's not safe for a young kit to be out of camp, he mewed. I'm not a young kit, she objected. I'll be ready to become a paw in a moon or two. Three moons, Mudfur corrected. Hailstar's ears twitched, but his expression betrayed nothing. Was he angry or amused? One moon or three, you're still too young to be out of camp, he mewed. You've had no training, Mudfur chimed, and you're still small enough for a hawk to steal you. You should never be more than a tail length from a warrior. Leopard Kit stuck out her tail indignantly. That doesn't make sense, she mewed. When we're playing moss ball, we're always more than a tail length. Hush, Hailstar silenced her with a flick of his tail. It's against clan rules for a kit to leave camp, he mewed. If you want to become a warrior, the first thing you need to learn is to follow rules. Leopard Kit opened her jaws to argue some more. 
Then her gaze sank down toward the space between her paws. She couldn't argue against the warrior code. Hailstar's expression softened. It won't be long before you begin your training. And then you'll wish you were allowed to stay in camp from time to time. Just wait a moon or two. Three moons, Mudfur corrected him. I can't wait three moons, Leopard Kit complained. The other kits will be apprentices by then. I don't want to be the last kit left in the nursery. Hailstar narrowed his eyes thoughtfully. It must be hard when you've grown up together, Mudfur cut in. It's our duty to keep you safe until you're big enough to start training. I'll eat extra prey, Leopard Kit mewed. I'll grow as big as Black Kid, and you'll have to make me an apprentice. Hailstar's whiskers twitched. Did he think this was funny? I mean it, Leopard Kit insisted. I'm sure you do, Hailstar mewed. Frustration itched beneath Leopard Kit's pelt. She had to start training soon. River Clan's future might depend on it. White Fang would train me now if you let him. She looked imploringly at the white warrior. He'd shown her how to stalk today. He clearly thought she was ready. And he was so kind and strong, she knew she could learn a lot from him. He doesn't think I'm too small. White Fang looked at his paws. Don't be in such a rush, Mudfur told her. You'll have plenty of time to be a warrior. But you're the one who told me Star Clan saved me for a reason, she argued. That's why I have to start training as soon as possible. Hailstar got to his paws. I'm sure whatever Star Clan has in store for you can wait, he mewed. You will start training once I think you're ready. She dug her claws into the ground. I'm ready now. Mudfur shooed her toward the entrance with his tail. Don't argue, Leopard Kit. I'm not arguing, I'm trying to explain. She gazed desperately into Hailstar's eyes. Didn't he realize how much this meant to her? I have to serve River Clan to honor my mother, her sacrifice. Please don't make me wait. He blinked at her, and she saw warmth in his gaze. Have I persuaded him? Hailstar turned to Mudfur. What do you think? Leopard Kit felt a stab of dread in her chest. Was her father going to tell the leader that he still had his doubts? She saw Mudfur glance at her, holding her eye for a long time. Please agree, she thought desperately. Please tell him you think I'm ready. Mudfur turned back to the leader, dipping his head. I will agree with your decision, he mewed. Whatever that is. Hailstar looked back toward Leopard Kit. Very well, he said. I suppose we can make an exception. Thank you. <laughs> Leopard Kit willed herself not to purr too loudly as she bowed her head, then turned and ducked through the trailing moss, screwing up her eyes as sunshine dazzled her. Hailstar will be glad he agreed, she thought, once I become an important River Clan warrior. Her belly burned with excitement as she remembered that she was a cat with a destiny. Her father had said so and she was going to prove him right. Sky Paw and Sun Paw followed their mentors into the river. Leopard Paw, watching from the shore, shuddered as she saw the water flowing around their legs and rushing beneath their bellies. Volclaw was already midstream, turning to face Sun Paw. Not so fast, he warned. The current is strong here. I've swum in the river lots of times, Sunpaw mewed. Swimming and hunting are not the same thing, Volclaw said. Take it slowly. Sunpaw did as she was told. Beside her, Softwing was treading water, her strong paws holding her steady in the fast-flowing river. Hold your head up and keep facing upstream, she called this Skypaw. Whitefang nudged Leopardpaw into the shallows. Stay close to the others he advised. She resisted, her heart pounding. She hadn't gotten more than her belly fur wet in the two moons that had passed since the incident with Skypaw. The thought of water covering her muzzle still made her shudder. But what if I get swept away? For the first time since she'd been given her apprentice name, she felt suddenly aware that she was smaller than her denmates. She'd managed to keep up with them easily when their mentors had taken them on their first tour of RiverClan's territory, and when they'd learned their first battle move, her quickness had made up for her size. But today, faced with her first fishing lesson, 
she felt sick with fear. White Fang blinked at her kindly. I'll be with you, he mewed. I won't let you get swept away. But what if water goes up my nose? She remembered how it had made her splutter and cough. But how could she admit it? She was a river clan cat. She wasn't supposed to be afraid of water. Sunpaw waded in deeper and pushed off into the stream, the water flowing over her shoulders. Skypaw followed, clearly as comfortable as a water vole in the rushing river. She ducked suddenly beneath the surface, then bobbed up again and shook water from her ears. Hurry up, she called to Leopardpaw as she swam easily around Softwing. Leopardpaw felt a twinge of irritation. I wouldn't be scared if you hadn't pushed me under. Did Skypaw even remember what she'd done? Come on, Leopardpaw. Sunpaw had swum into an eddy in the middle of the river and was letting it swirl her around. It's fun. Leopardpaw stared at her, wishing she weren't so scared. She tried to force her paws forward, but they felt like they were made of stone. White Fang glanced at her for a moment, then swished his tail. Let's head upstream, he mewed. There's a pool there. It's shallow enough to wade in, and sometimes fish get caught there. We can check it for prey, he called out to Softwing. We're going to see if there's anything in the minnow trap, he told her. We'll catch up later, Softwing mewed back, nudging Skypaw into a patch of smooth water. Leopardpaw followed White Fang, avoiding the gazes of the others. Her pelt prickled self-consciously as they headed upstream. If she didn't get over her fear of the river, her den mates would start calling her a dry paw. Worse than that, how would she ever fulfill her destiny? She couldn't save River Clan if she was too scared to swim. I'm not a dry paw, Leopard Paw glared at Black Paw. Sky Paw said you won't even get your belly fur wet, he mewed back. That's not true, Leopard Paw snapped. The minnow pool had been so deep, the water had nearly reached her shoulders. And she ducked down to let it wash over her back so that her pelt was completely soaked when she returned to camp. Outside the apprentice's den, Skypaw was dozing after her morning in the river. Leopardpaw could see the brown tabby's ears twitching. Was she listening to her brother tease Leopardpaw? I'm sure you did tell him I wouldn't swim. Frogpaw was lying in the soft grass beside the den. He took another bite of trout and chewed it slowly, his gaze on leopard paw. She's still kind of small, he told Black Paw. Perhaps she's scared she'll get eaten by a pike. Black Paw's eyes glittered mischievously. I heard pikes can swallow kits whole. I'm not a kit, leopard paw mewed hotly. You're only five moons old, Frog Paw pointed out. Nearly six, leopard paw corrected him. And I've got my apprentice name. Black Paw's whiskers twitched. That doesn't mean a pike won't swallow you. Leopard Paw turned her tail on him. Sun Paw padded out of the dirt place tunnel and crossed the clearing. She stopped beside Leopard Paw, clearly noticing her ruffled pelt. What's wrong? She mewed. Leopard Paw fluffed out her fur. She wasn't going to tattle, but Frog Paw answered for her. Black Paw's teasing her about being a dry paw. He took another mouthful of trout. Sunpaw jerked her nose toward Skypaw. I told you not to say anything. Skypaw opened her eyes and blinked at her denmate innocently. He asked how training went, that's all. She sat up and stretched. And I just mentioned how Leopardpaw preferred fishing in the minnow pool rather than the river. That was White Fang's idea, Sunpaw reminded her sharply. Only because he saw the look on Leopardpaw's face, Skypaw mewed casually. When he nosed her toward the river, she looked as if he'd asked her to jump off sunning rocks. I did not. Leopard Paw choked back the words. She wasn't going to get into an argument. It would make her seem even more like a kit. But she was going to stop being scared of the water. She was going to show her den mates that Star Clan had a plan for her. Crossly, she sat down beside Frog Paw and took a bite of the trout. Wouldn't it be better to practice battle moves instead? She gazed eagerly at White Fang as they stood on the riverbank. The others were fishing here earlier. They've probably frightened all the best fish away. White Fang frowned thoughtfully. I guess we'd have a better chance of catching something if we waited until tomorrow, he agreed. 
Leopard Paul felt a rush of relief. Battle moves were important. She could get over her fear of the water tomorrow. It would be easier then, with more fish to distract her. Tomorrow came and went. Then another and another. There was so much to learn about RiverClan's territory and battle skills and tactics and which fish swam in which part of the river. Leopard Paw became skilled at fishing in shallow pools where fish found themselves trapped. White Fang didn't seem to argue when she found other ways to hunt that kept her pelt dry. Perhaps he was pleased she was so resourceful. He seemed impressed that she was always the first to find patches of shade near the bank where fish sheltered from the sun. She could spot a brown trout even in murky water. And she was so fast she could hook it out before it saw her shadow and tried to swim away. As her warrior assessment grew steadily closer, she felt surer and surer that tomorrow she'd face her fear of the river and simply dive in. But every day she found another excuse to put it off. Do it again, Timberfur circled Leopard Paw and Frog Paw as they faced each other in a clearing beside the camp. Leopard Paw dropped into a battle crouch, her muscles aching. How many times would they have to practice this move? Keep your belly low. Timberfur told her. The dark brown Tom touched his tail tip to Frogpaw's shoulder. He thrust a paw suddenly into Frogpaw's haunch, and the gray Tom wobbled and fought to stay on his paws. You need to be properly balanced. White Fang stood back and watched, and Leopardpaw felt her mentor's gaze run along her flank. She tried not to tremble from the effort of keeping still while Frogpaw eased himself back into the battle stance. Ready? Timberfur looked from Leopard Paw to Frog Paw. They nodded at the same time. Attack! Frog Paw leaped at Leopard Paw, but she was a moment faster and was already rearing as he reached her. She hooked her paws into his scruff, unbalanced him with a sharp jerk, and sent him staggering away. Good! Timberfur nodded at her, then nudged Frog Paw back to the center of the clearing and whisked his tail. Again! Leopard Paw blinked at him her heart sinking. Again? You'll keep doing it until you've both got it perfect, Timberfur told her. Leopard Paw nodded and tried not to sigh as she retook her original position, wondering once more how many times she would have to repeat these battle moves. It wasn't always fun, being a cat with a destiny. I really thought I'd do it this time, Leopard Paw felt anxious as she whispered to Sun Paw. They were curled in their nests at the end of a hard day's training. Moonlight was filtering through the woven willow roof of the den, and the other apprentices were already asleep. The sound of their gentle breathing filled the air, while frogs croaked in the distance and a curlew called out across the water meadow. Leopard Paw rested her chin on the side of her nest, feeling weary with disappointment. But I just froze. Again? Sunpaw blinked at her sympathetically, her amber eyes reflecting the silvery light. White Fang pointed out a chub in the middle of the river, and I tried to go in. The water was past my belly, but I just couldn't dive under. Leopard Paw's belly tightened. She was beginning to think she'd never have the courage to swim like other River Clan warriors. How was she going to save their clan? Was White Fang angry? Sunpaw asked. No. Leopard Paw was beginning to wonder if her mentor had simply given up hope that she'd ever swim. He just pointed out a tiny trout near the edge where I could reach it. He sounded really disappointed. Would it be easier if he wasn't watching? Sun Paw asked. I don't know. White Fang was so kind and patient. She couldn't believe he was the problem. It was her own lack of courage that was to blame. Leopard Paw watched Sky Paw and Black Paw drag a tattered old nest from the elder's den. She was relieved she hadn't been given cleaning duty. She'd woken early that morning and was already hunting for frogs in the reed bed with Loud Paw and Sedge Paw by the time Shellheart began handing out the day's assignments. Frog Paw patted to her side. Should we help them? He asked. After we've eaten, Leopard Paw mewed. It wasn't her fault they'd woken late. Besides, her belly was rumbling with hunger. She padded toward the fresh kill pile, 
but Reed Paul was already carrying a large bream toward the apprentice's den. He dropped it outside and beckoned her with his tail. Let's share this, he called. Leopard Paw hurried toward him, Frog Paw at her tail. The bream smelled fresh and tasty. Her mouth watering, Leopard Paw leaned down to take a bite. Leopard Paw! Sun Paw's mew made her jerk around. Her friend was hurrying toward her. Come with me! She nosed Leopard Paw away from the bream. But I'm hungry, Leopard Paw complained, glancing at the fish. If you come with me, you can have the best meal ever. Leopard Paw widened her eyes. What do you mean? Follow me, Sun Paw told her. Curious, Leopard Paw followed her friend out of the camp and along the shore to where the river widened and slowed before it tumbled into the gorge. Sun Paw stopped and looked across the green water. Leopard Paw followed her gaze. The scent of carp touched her nose, and she saw a fat, shiny fish lying on the far bank. Carp's your favorite, right? Sun Paw asked. Leopard Paw wiped her tongue around her jaws. Yes. Good, Sun Paw looked at her. That's my catch over there. But if you swim to it, I'll share it with you. Leopard Paw stiffened. She guessed what her friend was trying to do. Sun Paw had clearly gone to a lot of effort to set this up and was willing to share her carp. But it would be far easier to go back to camp and eat bream with Frog Paw and Reed Paw. She blinked at the pale gray she-cat. Can't I try later? She mewed hopefully. The carp won't taste as good later, Sun Paw told her. And you'll be disappointed in me. Leopard Paw looked back at the fish. A heron was standing on a stone a few tree lengths upstream. If it caught sight of the carp lying unguarded, it would swoop in and steal it. Sun Paw glanced at the heron and then at Leopard Paw. If you don't hurry up, we'll both lose out she mewed. Her voice sounded like White Fang's had, the day she hadn't been brave enough to swim to the middle of the river to catch a chub. Leopard Paw felt no braver now than she had then. She was sure that if she dived into the river, she'd sink before she reached the other side. Water would fill her nose and mouth, and she might never breathe again. Her heart thumped like a trapped badger in her chest. Sun Paw nudged her toward the river's edge. Just do it. Just do it. Sun Paw was watching her with large, hopeful eyes. The heron was shifting on its stone, its gaze flitting over the bank. Okay, Leopard Paw took a steadying breath. If I die, then I die. Drowning might be better than spending the rest of her life as the warrior who never dared to swim. Ignoring the fear churning in her belly, she waded into the water. Panic began to pulse in her paws. She felt sick, but she kept going, feeling the water touch her belly fur, then rise around her flanks until it was lapping over her spine. Closing her eyes, she pushed away from the shore and plunged into the deep water. The chill of it set her blood roaring in her ears. She churned the water. Where was the bottom? Terror sparked in every hair of her pelt as she realized it was out of reach. She flailed her paws, feeling as clumsy as a ThunderClan warrior. You can do it! She heard Sun Paw's mew and glimpsed her friend swimming a tail length away. I won't let you drown. Leopard Paw fought to stay above the surface. Water splashed up her nose and stung her eyes. Remember what Mudfur taught you? She remembered the swimming lessons her father had given her when she was a kit. Let the water hold you up, his mew rang in her mind. It will if you trust it. She'd swum then, before she knew enough to be frightened. You're a river clan cat, Mudfur had told her. Swimming is in your blood. She pictured her father swimming ahead of her as easily as a fish, and always looking over his shoulder to make sure she was okay, his tail just a whisker ahead so she could grab it if she needed. Slowly, her panic ebbed, and she felt her paws begin to work together, one reaching out after another and pulling her through the water. You're doing it, Sun Paw called out beside her. I am doing it. Triumph swelled in Leopard Paw's chest as her paws fell into a rhythm. Mudfur was right. The water was holding her up. It flowed around her, supporting her and letting her pull herself through it until she felt like part of the current. A moment later, she felt the river bottom beneath her paws and was padding onto the far shore, water streaming from her fur. 
She glared at the heron's eye and arched her back menacingly. Feathers ruffling, it lifted into the air and wheeled away over the reed bed. Sunpaw climbed out after her. She purred with delight. You did it! I did, didn't I? Leopardpaw circled around her, her tail high. She wondered suddenly why it had taken her so long to face her fear. It might be a while before she felt entirely comfortable in the water, but she knew now she could do it if she wanted. Next time, I won't let fear stop me. Sunpaw padded to the carp and carried it back to Leopardpaw, dropping it at her paws. You can eat it all if you like, she mewed. You've earned it. Leopardpaw blinked at her happily. It'll taste better if we share it, she mewed. I knew you'd do it eventually, White Fang had told her when they got back to camp. You just needed to find the right time. Since then, her mentor had made her swim every day. You've got a lot of training to catch up on, he told her as he taught her to dive into the deepest parts of the river and how to navigate the currents and where to watch out for eddies and hidden rocks. Soon she could tell by the bubbles breaking the surface where a fish was lurking and dive for it, darting so smoothly through the water it had no chance to escape. Today, though, had been spent on battle techniques. The countless mornings practicing with frog paw and timber fur had given her patience and skill she hadn't realized until this afternoon, when she had finally beaten black paw in a fight. The tom was bigger and stronger than her, but she'd noticed his weakness a tendency to put his weight too much on his hind paws, and had first unbalanced him, then, fast as a snake, changed her attack so that he didn't have time to avoid the lunge that knocked him to the ground and let her pin him there. Now she lay back as the sun, soft and orange as duck feathers against the pale evening sky, sank behind the moor. The long spine of the carp she'd shared with her denmates curved in front of her. Sunpaw was washing beside her, while Skypaw was licking the last scraps of flesh from between the bones. When I'm a warrior, Skypaw mewed between nibbles, I'm going to volunteer for every patrol. She scooped out a fish flake with her tongue. And I'll ask Hailstar if I can lead one. I don't want to lead patrols, Sunpaw mewed. I'm happy just being part of one. Leopardpaw looked toward the camp entrance, hoping Mudfur would return soon. She'd saved him a small rainbow trout that she'd caught while she'd been training. Trout was his favorite. And she couldn't wait to show him how she'd fished it out of the water without breaking the skin, except for the neat bite mark where she'd killed it. I wonder when the border patrol will be back, she mewed. Soon, Sunpaw guessed. They were only going to check the Sunning Rock's border. If they see any ThunderClan warriors, I hope they shred them. Leopardpaw ruffled her pelt crossly. ThunderClan had stolen Sunning Rocks a few moons ago, and she hadn't forgiven them. Those squirrel chasers are so greedy. Isn't the forest enough for them? I guess they think Sunning Rocks is part of the forest, Sunpaw mewed. Why? Leopardpaw flicked her tail. Sunning Rocks has always belonged to RiverClan. They have no right to it, and they know it. Reedpaw said that if he was leader, he'd take Sunning Rocks back, Skypaw mewed. Leopardpaw sniffed. She wondered why Skypaw seemed to care so much about what Reedpaw said. Why are you always so impressed by Reedpaw's bragging? She narrowed her eyes. Do you like him? Skypaw sat up. So what if I do? She mewed. He's going to be a great warrior, and he's so handsome. Sunpaw glanced shyly at her paws. Beetlenose is handsomer. Skypaw's eyes widened. Do you like beetle nose? Maybe. Sunpaw glanced at Leopardpaw. Who do you like? Me. Leopardpaw hadn't thought about it. She didn't care about Tom's. She was too busy with her training. No cat. Really? Skypaw blinked at her. What about Frogpaw? You two seem close. We just train together, she mewed. That's all. Are you sure? Skypaw pushed the fish carcass away. Her eyes sparkled teasingly. He's quite cute. I thought you liked Reedpaw, Leopardpaw mewed back. Before Skypaw could answer, the camp entrance rustled and Hailstar padded through it. Volclaw followed, with Crooked Jaw at his heels. Mudfur was leaning heavily against the RiverClan deputy, 
Leopard Paw sat up, her belly tightening with alarm. Her father was limping. Clumps of fur stuck out from his pelt. She could see gashes along his flank, and his muzzle was scratched and bleeding. Mud fur, she raced across the clearing. Hailstar waved her away. He's okay, he told her. But his wounds need dressing. Go back and wait with your denmates while Brambleberry sees to him. But- Go, Hailstar's eyes were dark. This is warrior business. Leopard Paw backed away, but couldn't bring herself to leave. She stared anxiously at Mudfur. I'm okay, her father promised. Do as Hailstar says. Leopard Paw held her ground. What happened? Mudfur fought for Sunning Rocks. Crooked Jaw guided Mudfur toward the shade of the willow. Leopard Paw began to follow. On his own? Against Adderfang, to decide who they belonged to, Crooked Jaw told her. Trout Claw circled the patrol as it crossed the clearing. Who won? Mudfur, Full Claw told him. Sunning Rocks belongs to River Clan again. As Brambleberry hurried from the medicine den, a wad of herbs in her jaws, warriors began to cluster around the returning patrol. Leopard Paw shifted one way, then the other, trying to keep her father in sight. Go back and wait with your denmates, Hailstar told her again, more sternly this time. We have important matters to discuss. Reluctantly, Leopard Paw backed away. Sky Paw patted to her side. Why did Mudfur have to fight alone? I don't know. Leopard Paw didn't care. She just wanted to know how bad her father's injuries were. Her belly churned as she tried to get a glimpse of him. But more and more warriors were getting in the way, clustering eagerly around Hailstar and the others while Brambleberry tended to Mudfur. Otter Splash and Pike Tooth paced around them, their tails twitching excitedly as Hailstar conferred with Timberfur and Rippleclaw. Leopard Paw swallowed back frustration. What was happening? She felt Sky Paw's nose brush her ear. I'm sure he'll be okay, the pale brown tabby mewed. You'll be able to talk to him soon. She stiffened as Otter Splash hurried toward them. Did you hear? Otter Splash's ears twitched. Mudfur is going to become a medicine cat. Leopard Paw blinked. What are you talking about? He's just told Hailstar he wants to give up being a warrior and train as a medicine cat. Otter Splash mewed. Leopard Paw could hardly believe her ears. Mudfur was one of the strongest warriors in River Clan. He'd just won back Sunning Rock's single pawed. Why? Otter Splash returned her gaze blankly. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm sure he has his reasons, Sky Paw told her. But he's never mentioned wanting to be a medicine cat. He'd have told me if this was something he'd been thinking about, right? She thought. Of course he would have. So maybe he's only saying this now because he's not thinking all that clearly after his fight. Time dragged as she waited for a chance to speak to Mudfur. She paced, her heart pounding as the sun began to sink toward the distant moor, until at last, the crowd of warriors began to disperse. Hailstar led Otter Splash and Pike Tooth to the edge of the camp. Willow Breeze padded to the fresh kill pile and took a trout to the elder's den. Volclaw called to his clanmates, organizing a patrol. Softwing began to tidy a pile of frog bones away from the warriors then. Come and help me, she called to Skypaw. Skypaw hesitated. Will you be okay? She asked Leopardpaw. Yeah. Leopardpaw didn't look at her. Thanks. She was staring at Mudfur. As Skypaw headed away, she hurried to her father's side. Mudfur? She inspected his pelt, relieved to see that the bleeding had stopped. Mudfur had propped himself up on his forepaws as Brambleberry laid more cobwebs over a wound on his leg. His eyes brightened as he saw Leopard Paw. Don't worry, I'm fine. Leopard Paw crouched beside him. Are you sure? Of course, he gave a weak purr. Brambleberry looked up from her work. He'll need to take it easy for a while. That shouldn't be hard, Mudfur gave a husky snort. Now that I won't be a warrior. Leopard Paw felt a sharp tug in her heart, like snagged claws. He's serious? But why? She stared at her father. Was the fight that bad? Mudfur nudged her shoulder with his muzzle. I'd do it again if I had to, he mewed. 
I just don't want to. Leopard Paw didn't understand. She couldn't imagine not wanting to be a warrior. But why not? I'm tired of fighting the same battle over and over again, he told her. Nothing ever seems to get settled. Brambleberry was chewing herbs. She spat the pulp onto her paw and began to work it into a bite mark on Mudfur's tail. There are more ways to help your clan than fighting. But Mudfur trained as a warrior, Leopardpaw argued. River Clan needs him. Brambleberry didn't look up from her work. Mudfur spoke instead. River Clan needs medicine cats, too, he mewed. Leopardpaw looked at him, suddenly noticing the gray hairs flecking his pelt. Was he just feeling old? She felt suddenly protective. I'm sure you'll be a great medicine cat. But she still didn't understand how he could give up being a warrior. Maybe one day, River Clan won't have to fight battles, she mewed. Mudfur looked unconvinced. Life isn't that simple, he mewed. But you're too young to understand. No, I'm not. Had he forgotten that he'd told her she was special? That one day she'd save River Clan? What if I make River Clan so strong we never have to fight again? He purred indulgently. That would be great. She could tell he didn't believe her, but she would show him. She'd make him see that River Clan didn't have to fight the same battles over and over again. She lapped his ears gently. He must be in pain. As she worked at them, cleaning the blood from his fur, her thoughts quickened. Perhaps it had been Mudfur's destiny to become a medicine cat all along. If it was, did it mean that when he'd said she was special, special enough to save all the clans, his words had been a prophecy? A half moon later, Leopard Paw crouched on the riverbank. She'd been far too busy training for her warrior assessment to worry about Mudfur's prophecy or his minnow-brained idea of becoming a medicine cat. White Fang had worked her hard, and she'd tried her best to impress him. Now, assessment day had arrived, and she and her denmates were being tested. She sniffed the two dead voles that lay at her paws. The apprentices had been told to bring back land prey, and now she was wondering if the water voles she'd caught counted as land prey or river prey. Perhaps she should head into the strip of forest that lay on this side of the river and catch a mouse. She glanced among the trees. Was White Fang watching from the undergrowth? She knew he'd be keeping an eye on her progress. Had she done enough to earn her warrior name? A branch jutting out over the river shivered above her. Leaves showered down, and she looked up, her ears pricking as she saw Skypaw padding unsteadily along the branch. Her denmate's eyes were fixed on a squirrel that she'd cornered by the trunk. Excitement sparkled in Skypaw's eyes. The assignment to catch land prey had been hard for apprentices used to hooking fish from the river, and a squirrel would be an impressive catch. Leopardpaw felt a twinge of envy. Why hadn't she tried to catch a squirrel? At the end of the branch, the squirrel had frozen. Its eyes flashed with panic. Skypaw crouched lower against the branch. Her hind paws were trembling, and Leopardpaw could see she was about to lunge for the squirrel. She held her breath as Skypaw launched herself forward, but the squirrel darted suddenly upward and disappeared into the leaves above her head. Skypaw landed on the empty branch tip. It dipped under her weight. She hissed in frustration as she fought to get a grip, but the branch snapped and her hind legs swung down. She dangled for a moment before losing her hold, slithering from the branch and splashing into the river below. Leopard Paw darted to the edge, her heart lurching as Sky Paw disappeared for a moment. But soon her head burst back through the surface. The tabby's gaze burned with rage as she swam to the shore and hauled herself out a few tail lengths downstream. Bad luck, Leopard Paw called. Sky Paw scowled at her. Why did they tell us to catch land prey? She snapped. It's not fair. I've been practicing fishing. They should have warned us. You can have one of these. Leopard Paw pushed a vole toward Sky Paw. Her sympathy for her denmate wrestled with the wry thought that she was only good at catching land prey because of that day Sky Paw had given her a fear of water. 
It had been just a moon or so since Leopard Paw had stopped hating her for it. The pale brown tabby whisked her tail irritably. Do you want me to be accused of cheating? With a huff, she headed into the forest. I'll catch my own prey, thanks. Leopard Paw decided not to go after her. Sky Paw was right. She had to do this alone. Back at camp, Loud Paw, Sun Paw, and Black Paw had already returned with their catch. As Leopard Paw padded into the clearing, Hailstar was looking pleased, and Oakheart and Volclaw were purring, their pelts fluffed with pride. Leopard Paw guessed that the three apprentices had passed the assessment. White Fang was standing beside the River Clan leader. Leopard Paw dropped her voles at his paws, blinking at him anxiously. Do these count as land prey? She mewed. You caught them on land, he told her. So they count. She felt a wave of relief. Then I passed. White Fang touched his muzzle to her head. Yes. Happiness surged in her chest. As she began to purr, Frogpaw and Reedpaw trotted into camp, Sedgepaw at their heels. All three of them were carrying prey. Hailstar nodded approvingly as they laid their catch in front of him. It seemed every cat had passed the assessment. The River Clan leader looked toward the camp entrance. Where's Skypaw? I just saw her, Leopardpaw told him. She was heading into the forest. Without prey? Hailstar frowned. Leopardpaw avoided the leader's gaze. She didn't want to tell him that Skypaw had let a squirrel escape. It had been a difficult catch, and she'd been brave to try. Hailstar's tail twitched impatiently. He glanced at the sky. It was past sun high. All the apprentices should have returned by now. She'll be back soon, Leopard Paw promised him. Her paws prickled anxiously. Please, Star Clan, help her catch something. She hurried toward her denmates. If Skypaw doesn't get back in time, she whispered, we should ask for our naming ceremonies to be delayed until she has a chance to take the assessment again. Black Paw frowned. But I want my name now, Frogpaw nudged him. An extra day or two won't make a difference, Reedpaw sniffed. What if she doesn't pass next time either? She will, Leopardpaw insisted. Sunpaw glanced hopefully toward the camp entrance. We don't know for sure she's failed. As she spoke, Skypaw stomped into camp. She was carrying nothing, and Leopardpaw's heart sank. Tail drooping, Skypaw crossed the clearing to Hailstar. I nearly caught a squirrel, she grunted. He shook his head sadly. Nearly is not enough, he mewed. Softwing hurried into camp, blinking sympathetically at Skypaw. Her technique was excellent, she told Hailstar. I watched her, she did well. Technique doesn't feed a clan, he mewed. Until she brings home prey, I can't give her a warrior name. Leopard Paw hurried forward. We don't want our warrior names either until Sky Paw gets hers. She glanced back at her denmates. Black Paw was looking cross, but he didn't argue. Sun Paw patted forward. Sky Paw will pass next time, she mewed. And we don't mind waiting until then for our ceremonies. Hailstar looked around at the apprentices. His eyes glowed with warmth. It's good to see such loyalty in our youngest warriors, he mewed. The naming ceremony can wait until Skypaw is ready to join you. Skypaw looked gratefully between Sunpaw and Leopardpaw. I don't want to hold you back, she mewed. We can still take care of our clan, even without our warrior names, Leopardpaw told her. Besides, you'll pass soon. I know you will. Skypaw lifted her chin. I'll make sure I do. A pale sliver of moon hung low in the sky. The moor top was rosy in the setting sun. Leopard Paw forced her paws to stop trembling as she waded between Mudfur and White Fang. Her clanmates had gathered and were ringed around the clearing, watching as Hailstar conducted the naming ceremonies. Loudbelly, Blackclaw, Skyheart, and Reedtail were already sitting proudly among the other warriors. Frogleap, Sunfish, and Sedge Creek had just made their promises to Hailstar to protect their clan. It would be her turn next. She would finally receive her warrior name. Mudfur smoothed down the fur between her ears with his tongue. Bright Sky will be watching, he mewed. 
she'll be as proud of you as I am. Leopard Paw's heart seemed to swell. She purred at him. I'm going to make you even prouder, she promised. As she spoke, White Fang nudged her forward. It's your turn, he whispered. Hailstar was looking at her expectantly as Frog Leap, Sunfish, and Sedge Creek padded away to join the others. She hurried across the clearing, her pelt hot as she felt the eyes of the whole clan on it. She stopped in front of the River Clan leader. She hadn't expected to be so nervous. She swallowed back the butterflies swarming in her belly. I call upon my warrior ancestors, Hailstar began slowly. Her heart seemed to burst with excitement. This was it. This was the beginning, he went on, to look down on this apprentice. With no mother to guide her, she has been raised by the clan. And it is with special pride that we watch her today pass from apprentice to warrior. She has trained hard to understand the ways of your noble code, and I commend her to you as a warrior of River Clan. Leopard Paw held her breath, knowing what he would say next, willing him to hurry. Leopard Paw, he mewed at last. Do you promise to uphold the warrior code and to protect and defend your clan, even at the cost of your life? I do, Leopard Paw mewed. I really do. Hailstar's whiskers quivered. Then, by the powers of Star Clan, I give you your warrior name. Leopard Paw, from this moment on, you will be known as Leopard Fur. Star Clan honors your determination, your independence, and your loyalty, and we welcome you as a full warrior of River Clan. Leopard Fur looked back at Mud Fur, pressing back a purr as his eyes lit up with pride. White Fang blinked at her happily. Her heart seemed to rise like a bird in her chest. She was a warrior. At last, she could begin to follow her destiny. Chapter Three Leopard Fur shook out her pelt. The rain was freezing, and it seemed like it had been longer than six moons since she'd been a paw, relishing the sunshine and warmth of Greenleaf. She glanced at Sunfish, but her friend hardly seemed to notice the downpour, though it was dripping from her whiskers. She had that starry-eyed look again. She must be thinking about Beetle Nose. Aren't you cold? Leopard Fur mewed. Yes, Sunfish mewed. But we'll be home soon. And Beetle Nose promised to catch a trout for me. We're going to share it. Leopard Fur huddled deeper against the rain. It seemed to have started at the beginning of Leaf Bear and fallen for a moon without stopping. The only time she'd felt warm was when she was curled in her nest in the warrior's den. I don't suppose he'll share the trout with me too, she grunted. Sunfish looked at her, surprised. Of course, she mewed. If you want some. No, thanks. Leopard Fur wasn't going to butt in on her friend's budding romance. I'll eat with Reed Tail and Frog Leap. Sunfish had had a crush on Beetle Nose since they were paws, and the handsome black warrior had finally seemed to notice that the pretty gray she cat wasn't a clumsy apprentice anymore. Leopard Fur glanced along the shore. She hadn't seen a bird or vole all morning. I think even River Prey is smart enough to stay in its burrow today, she mewed. Sunfish looked at the river, swollen by the rain. Beetle Nose says that any fish worth catching has headed upstream to look for warmer water. Leopard Fur sniffed. Did Sunfish believe everything that Tom told her? The fish hadn't gone to look for warmer water. It was just harder to catch them when the river was churning and the currents were fierce. She kept the thought to herself. She was only feeling grumpy because she was cold and hungry. There was no need to take it out on her friend. If Sunfish wanted to end up in the nursery surrounded by kits, that was her choice. Leopard Fur was more interested in being a warrior. She looked at the trees lining the riverbank. The thin strip of woodland was River Clan's only forest territory, and they hardly bothered hunting there. No cat in River Clan besides Grey Pool and Willow Breeze liked forest prey. It tasted too musky. 
But in weather like this, it might be the only place they could find food. Shall we hunt here? Sunfish followed her gaze. At least we'll be out of the wind, she mewed. Leopard fur headed for the trees, slowing as she reached a small clearing. She let her eyes adjust to the gloom. Sunfish stopped beside her, her eyes wide as she scanned the shadows. Don't Thunderclan cats miss fresh air, she mewed. I guess they're used to breathing in leaf mold, Leopard fur sniffed. Sunfish wrinkled her nose. How can they detect prey when everything smells like wet bark? Movement caught Leopard Fur's eye. Over there, she nodded toward a birch. Something was rummaging between its roots. Dropping low, she padded toward it, her tail skimming the ground as her gaze fixed on the twitching leaves. Sunfish drew level with her as she stopped a paw length from the tree. A tiny tail showed for a moment between the leaves, then disappeared. It's a mouse. Leopard fur breathed excitedly. The pile rippled as the mouse burrowed deeper. I think it's looking for food. Beetlenose says mice are the hardest prey to catch, Sunfish whispered. They move faster than fish. Leopard fur suddenly had the overwhelming urge to prove Beetlenose wrong. Without waiting to gauge the mouse's movements, she leaped at the leaf pile and slammed her paws down on either side. She had it trapped. And when it ran for the fork in the roots, she'd catch it. She held her breath, waiting for the mouse to burst from the leaves in panic, ready to lunge for it and hook it into a killing bite. Nothing moved. The leaves between her paws lay still. Confused, Leopard Fur slapped her paws down again, hoping to flush the mouse out. There was still no sign of it. Frustration flared in her belly. She began to scrabble through at the leaf pile. Where had the mouse gone? Surely there was nowhere for it to escape. Sunfish padded toward her and peered over her shoulder. Did you catch it? Leopard fur flashed her a look. Does it look like I did? She dug a space in the leaves, dismayed as she saw a gap beneath one of the roots. It was so tiny she wondered how a mouse could have squirmed through. But when she sniffed it, she smelled the fierce scent of her quarry. She followed the scent around the tree, but it had disappeared. The mouse was gone. Her heart sank. Graypool and Softwing were in the nursery, and there were kits. River Clan was depending on her. She paced around the birch one more time. Sunfish watched her. I guess Beetlenose was- Leopard Fur cut her off. Don't you dare tell me Beetlenose was right, she snapped. Sunfish blinked at her. But he was. Leopard fur glared at her friend. Her fury melted at once as she saw Sunfish's wide, innocent eyes. Having a crush seemed like a waste of time to Leopard fur, but if it stopped Sunfish from feeling cold and hungry, why spoil it? Splinters of bark showered around them. Leopard fur looked up. A squirrel was darting along a bare branch high above. She dropped against the earth, flattening herself among the leaves. Hide, she ordered Sunfish. Sunfish darted toward the trunk and ducked down beside a root, her gray pelt melting into the shadow. Together they watched the squirrel as it reached the trunk. Leopard Fur's heart leaped as it began to scrabble down the bark toward them. Don't move until it's within reach. She willed Sunfish to understand, but Sunfish was smart. She would know as well as any cat that they only had to stay completely still and wait. Squirrels were fast, but they weren't as cautious as ground prey, which was probably why Thunderclan cats grew so fat during Greenleaf. Her heart pounded harder as the squirrel scurried down the trunk, its paws spread as it gripped on with nimble claws. Sunfish's gaze was following the squirrel, but not even a hair on her pelt twitched. Leopard fur held her breath as it raced closer. Her muscles tingled with the urge to leap for it, but she forced herself to stay still until, with a sudden burst of speed, the squirrel swarmed down the final tail length of the trunk and darted along a root. Leopard fur exploded from the leaves, her ears flattening as she streaked after it. Sunfish shot after her, veering one way as leopard fur veered the other. Together they flanked their prey as it pelted for an oak. It mustn't reach it. There was no way they'd be able to keep up with it if it reached the trunk. She glanced at Sunfish. Sunfish caught her eye and seemed to understand. 
She slowed and fell in behind the squirrel as leopard fur gave a final push and lunged in front of it. Blocked ahead and behind, the squirrel changed course. Panic flared in its eyes as it looked for escape. Faster than an eel, leopard fur switched her weight from one paw to another and swerved deftly after their prey. Flinging out her forepaws, she pinned it to the ground. And before it could even squeal, she delivered the killing bite. Sunfish pulled up beside her and sat back on her haunches, panting. Her whiskers twitched with distaste as the squirrel's blood filled the damp air with a warm, earthy smell. How do Thunderclan cats eat these all the time? She mewed. I guess a cat can eat anything if they're hungry. Leopard fur lifted the squirrel's limp body with a claw. Her belly rumbled. It was no fish, but it was food. And Graypool and Softwing would be grateful for it. Grabbing its fur between her teeth, she picked it up and they headed back to camp. The rain kept pounding the camp through the night. And when Leopard Fur slid from the warrior's den the next morning, the clearing was slick with mud. She flattened her ears against the downpour. The sky was laden with heavy gray clouds. It looked as though there'd be no break in the weather today. Come and help, Sedge Creek called to her from beside the nursery. The roof's leaking. She was stuffing leaves between the stems of the woven willow den. Petal Dust was working beside her. We might be wasting our time fixing the nursery, she mewed. The water's rising so much. Graypool and Softwing might have to move to the elder's den. Leopard Fur glanced at the water rushing through the reed bed and lapping the edges of the clearing. Beyond, the river swirled muddy and fast. The currents would still be too dangerous for fishing today. She hurried to help Petal Dust and Sedge Creek, grabbing a paw full of wet leaves from the pile and pushing them into a gap. The tips of the leaves flapped loosely in the wind. Wouldn't moss be better? She asked Petal Dust. We could pack it tighter. Brambleberry wants to save the moss to line nests, Petal Dust told her. She says it's easier to dry out. Sedge Creek snorted. I don't think any cat in River Clan has slept in a dry nest for a moon, she mewed. Hailstar and Crooked Jaw, who'd become deputy after Shellheart had retired to the elder's den, were watching the water rise through the reed bed, their eyes dark with worry. As Leopard Fur pressed another paw full of leaves into a gap, Softwing appeared at the entrance to the nursery and peered out. Mallowkit and Dawnkit tried to nose past her, but she drew them close to her belly with her tail as she gazed anxiously at the swollen river. Hi, Softwing, Leopard Fur greeted her with a nod. How's Graypool? The Grey Queen was expecting Rippleclaw's kits and had been feeling too sick to eat. She's still nauseous. Softwing answered with a sigh. Perhaps if she had more to eat and a drier nest, she'd feel better. Leopard Star felt a twinge of guilt as she remembered the solitary squirrel she and Sunfish had caught yesterday. She glanced at Petal Dust. Has Crooked Jaw sent out any hunting patrols yet? He sent out three at dawn, but none are back, Petal Dust told her. Leopard Fur shook out her wet fur, wishing she'd woken earlier and joined one. But she'd been on guard duty until late, and Crooked Jaw had told her to sleep in. Mudfur was heading up the slope toward the elder's den with a bundle of leaves in his jaws. He was almost as skilled with herbs as Brambleberry after his moons of training. Leopardfur was used to him being a medicine cat now. She even felt proud that, though he was no longer a warrior, he worked tirelessly to protect his clan. Crooked Jaw hurried to meet him. Are those for birdsong? Nodding, Mudfur ducked into the willow den. Only Tangle Whisker and Birdsong slept there now that Shellheart and Troutclaw had died, and Birdsong had been coughing for days. As Crooked Jaw followed Mudfur inside, Leopard Fur scooped up more leaves and began to press them around the bottom of the den wall, sealing a gap where rainwater had been trickling through. She worked her way around the den, wondering if she should head out of camp to gather more. This pile wouldn't be enough to plug every gap in the nursery. Crooked Jaw burst out of the elder's den and hurried toward Hailstar. Leopard Fur stiffened. Was Birdsong worse? She watched as Hailstar raised his tail. He looked pleased. Perhaps Birdsong had recovered. As Leopard Fur stretched her ears, straining to hear what the two warriors were talking about so excitedly, Hailstar called across the clearing. Petal dust. Sedge Creek, Leopard Fur. 
Her heart quickened as she heard her own name. She dropped the leaves and hurried toward him. We're going to fetch dry bedding, Hailstar announced. There's a barn just past the dog fence. His eyes were shining. I used to hunt there when I was a paw. I haven't been there for many, many moons. Crooked Jaw was pacing around the river clan leader. We can catch some mice while we're there. Leopard Fur felt a surge of hope. For the first time in days, some of her clanmates might sleep in dry nests with full bellies. As Hailstar headed for the camp entrance, she hurried after him. The patrol followed the path around the camp wall. The stepping stones had disappeared beneath the surface, so they crossed the river at its narrowest point. The current was fierce here, but there was not far to swim. Leopard fur had become such a strong swimmer that it was easy to push through the surging water. And she was pleased to note that she could hardly remember the time when she'd been frightened of getting her paws wet. Climbing out on the far bank, she looked back to check that the others were safe. Hailstar and Crooked Jaw waded out, petal dust following. But where was Sedge Creek? Leopard Fur couldn't see her den mate in the frothing river. As she began to splash back into the water, Sedge Creek's head appeared above the waves. Water streaming from her ears and whiskers, the tabby she-cat swam to the bank and climbed out. Are you okay? Leopard Fur hurried to meet her. Of course, Sedge Creek shook out her fur. I swam underwater. The current's not so strong there. I might be a stronger swimmer than I used to be, Leopard Fur thought. But I still don't know the river as well as some of my clanmates do. Hailstar and Crooked Jaw were already heading for the beach copse, where rain was rattling the brown leaves. Leopard Fur hurried after them with Petal Dust and Sedge Creek, and they fell into single file as they reached the marsh beyond. Half blinded by the rain, Leopard Fur didn't see the dog fence until Hailstar signaled the patrol to halt with a flick of his tail. Wait, he sniffed along the gray fence. No dog scent, he told them, sounding relieved, and slid underneath. Heart pounding, Leopard Fur followed the others. She'd never been here before. Was it even clan territory? The rain made it hard to detect border scents. The field inside the dog fence was wide and grassy, and there was a sour scent in the air she didn't recognize. She felt exposed as she followed her clan mates across the open meadow, and was relieved when they reached a low gray wall. As they sheltered beside it, Leopard Fur gazed nervously at the huge nest beyond. It rose squarely against the pigeon gray sky, its black wooden sides dark and forbidding. What is it? She whispered. Hailstar glanced at her. It's a barn, he told her. Petal Dust leaned closer. It's built by two legs, she explained. But they don't sleep in it. They just store grass there and raise mice. Hailstar and Crooked Jaw had leaped onto the low wall. All clear? Crooked Jaw looked anxiously at his leader. As Hailstar nodded, he glanced down at the others. Come on. Sedge Creek was the first over. And as Leopard Fur followed, her heart pounding, she saw a wide stone clearing in front of the barn. Hailstar hurried across it, glancing warily one way and then the other. Leopard Fur followed with her clanmates. She felt suddenly very far from home. The sour smell was getting stronger, and her pelt lifted along her spine. Had Hailstar really hunted here when he was young? She knew the river clan leader was brave, but she hadn't realized he was so daring. Since her nursery days, He'd kept close to his clan, guarding them like an anxious mother. She'd forgotten that he'd once been a warrior who'd had adventures of his own. Her unease grew as Hailstar ducked into the barn through a small ragged hole low down in the side. Would it be safe in there? It would be drier, at least. She followed him through, the rough wood scraping her wet pelt, relieved to find the barn airy and dry. The roof was so high that she wondered if it was brushing the gray clouds outside. She sneezed. The air here was dusty. Motes drifted in shafts of light that fell through slits in the walls. The wide stone floor was stacked with golden piles of dry grass. Leopard Fur wondered how much they could carry home. If they made bundles, they might be able to make dry nests for every elder and queen. Crooked Jaw had crossed to the nearest grass stack and was ripping out a clawful. Sedge Creek joined him and began adding to the pile he had made. Leopard Fur hurried to the stack next to them and began tearing out bundles of hay. 
Dust billowed around her, and she narrowed her eyes against the sting as she pulled out more and more. Petal Dust and Hailstar worked steadily beside her, and soon the pile they'd made was almost as tall as leopard fur. She gathered it together and began wrapping the stems around her paws, creating bundles they could carry home between their jaws. Her belly growled with hunger, and she realized that through the hay smell of sunshine and dried leaves, she could smell mouse. She paused and licked her lips. Hailstar had said they could hunt here. The air was certainly rich with the smell of prey. Crooked Jaw and Sedge Creek were already sniffing around the shadows at the back of the barn. Sedge Creek darted suddenly forward, and a mouse scurried past her outstretched paws, straight into Crooked Jaws. He killed it quickly and scanned the barn for more. Hailstar was watching them too, his pulp prickling with excitement. He hurried to join them, and leopard fur padded closer. The mice here were big. Crooked Jaw's catch lay on the stone, plump and large, and there was another moving in the shadows that looked even bigger. She unsheathed her claws. How would they carry so many good things home? They might have to make two trips, first to take home the bedding, another to carry home their catch. The clan would be pleased to see what they'd brought. She imagined Softwing's eyes shining when she realized her kits would sleep in dry nests tonight. Watch out! Crooked Jaw's warning yowl made her jerk her muzzle around. Was a two-leg coming? She sniffed the air, sneezing as dust filled her nose. Then a rancid scent hit her. It had the warmth and muskiness of mouse scent, but there was a sourness that made her shudder. Rats! Hailstar's pelt spiked with alarm. Sedge Creek squawked with surprise. They're attacking us! Leopard Fur's eyes widened. The four creatures darting from the shadows were long and muscular, far larger than mice, their sharp yellow teeth glinting in the dim light, their tails like stiff worms. They were squealing and their eyes glittered with malice. Fear flared beneath her pelt as one of the rats fastened its jaws around Sedge Creek's hind paw. Crooked Jaw pounced on it, killing it with a single bite. But blood was already welling on Sedge Creek's paw. Are you okay? He asked, but there was no time to check the wound. More rats were streaming from every side of the barn. Leopard Fur's pelt spiked as fear flooded her. Hailstar swiped it one after another, flinging them away, but they kept coming. Get help, Crooked Jaw yowled at Petal Dust. But, Petal Dust began to argue. No! Hailstar shook a rat from his forepaw, where it had latched on with its jaws. Petal Dust turned and raced for the gap in the wall. Beside Leopard Fur, Sedge Creek was fighting on three legs, blood pouring from her fourth as she shook one rat off, then another, her balance awkward as she leaned her head away from the vile creatures while clawing at them. Hailstar lunged this way and that, rats on every side. Pain seared Leopard Fur's tail. She felt the weight of a rat dragging behind her. Spinning, she sank her teeth into its neck. It thrashed, paws flailing. As it fell limp, she felt claws dig into her back. Another was clinging to her pelt. Its sharp teeth sank into her flesh. Panic sparked beneath her pelt. The rats were attacking faster than she could fight them off. Help! Crooked Jaw darted toward her and hooked the rat off of her back. Its teeth ripped out fur, and she yelped as the sour stench of blood and rats flooded around her. Hailstar! Sedge Creek's wail sounded above the rats shrieking. Leopard fur jerked around. The River Clan leader was staggering, one rat clinging to his spine, another dragging at his hind legs with its teeth. Crooked Jaw raced toward him and hauled the biggest rat off with his claws. He flung it into the shadows and knocked another away as Hailstar fought to regain his paws before he was lost beneath the sea of rats. As a fresh surge poured toward her, Leopard Fur batted one with a hefty swipe, but another took its place. She swung blow after blow as the rats kept coming. She felt Sedge Creek slump against her and glanced in alarm at her den mate. Sedge Creek's ears were flat, her eyes wide with terror, but she was still fighting. She pressed harder against Leopard Fur as she struggled to stay on her paws. Leopard Fur pressed back, doing her best to support her clanmate as they fought off wave after wave of rats. Can we get to the entrance? She called not daring to take her eyes from their attackers to see if there was a way to escape. Crooked Jaw answered, 
If we stop fighting for a moment, we'll be overwhelmed, he yelled. But we can't keep this up, Leopard Fur wailed. We need to work together, Crooked Jaw backed toward them, hooking Hailstar's pelt and jerking the River Clan leader with him. Warriors, tail to tail. Leopard Fur understood. She scuttled backward and pressed her spine against Crooked Jaws. Hailstar and Sedge Creek wedged themselves in between. As one, they reared up onto their hind paws, forming a circle of flashing claws. Hailstar was panting. Leopard Fur could feel his flanks heaving against hers and his blood soaking her pelt. But still he thrashed mercilessly at the surging rats. Her panic rose into rage. How dare prey attack warriors? Drawing her lips back, she hissed at them and flung out swipe after swipe, yowling in triumph each time she sent one flying backward into the swarm. Sedge Creek was trembling, her hind legs unsteady beneath her. Leopard Fur propped her up as best she could, and Sedge Creek fought fiercely, slamming her forepaws down repeatedly on the writhing, squealing bodies. Over and over again, they swiped and clawed at their foul enemies, until exhaustion began to drag at Leopard Fur's bones. Crooked Jaw was fighting relentlessly, but even he was beginning to slow. How could they win against so many? Try to get to the entrance. Crooked Jaw began to steer the patrol through the mass of rats. Leopard Fur winced as one nipped at her hind paw. She kicked it away. Desperation welled in her chest. They had to reach the gap, but Sedge Creek was stumbling. Hailstar seemed barely able to stay upright. She and Crooked Jaw appeared to be carrying their weight as they flailed blindly now against the onslaught. Leopard Fur glanced at the hole. It was only a few tail lengths away, but it seemed unreachable. As she longed for the daylight that showed beyond, a face peeked through the gap. Petal dust. She was back. I've brought help, the tortoise shell charged into the barn, ripple claw and timber fur streaming after her. Sunfish, black claw, and owl fur were at their heels. The warriors plunged into the swarm and began hooking rats with their claws and flinging them away. Alfer lunged at one rat after another, clamping his jaws around their spines and cracking them as easily as killing fish trapped in a pool. Sunfish tore at the rats' oily pelts, and the air grew thick with their fierce scent. The rats scattered like mist vanishing beneath the sun and ran, shrieking for the edge of the barn, flowing back into the shadows. Heavy with relief and completely exhausted, Leopard Fur dropped to her belly. Her heart ached with gratitude toward her clanmates as Timberfur, Owlfur, and Rippleclaw chased the last of the rats back to their dens. We did it, she blinked happily at Crooked Jaw. Crooked Jaw turned and lapped blood from her ears. Yes, we did. Sedge Creek groaned and collapsed onto her side. As she lay bleeding on the stone, Leopard Fur stared at her, appalled by the ragged bite marks that showed on every paw. White fur flashed at the corner of her vision. Leopard Fur recognized Brambleberry's pelt. She moved aside to let the medicine cat examine Sedge Creek, and Sunfish hurried to watch. Fetch cobwebs, Brambleberry ordered. Rippleclaw and Timberfur streaked away and stretched up on the huge piles of grass to snatch cobwebs from the walls. Hailstar! At Alfur's panicked mew, Leopard Fur jerked around. The River Clan leader was lying on the stone, blood welling at his throat. She felt sick. Help him, she begged Brambleberry. The medicine cat glanced from Sedge Creek to Hailstar, her eyes narrowing as if she was trying to figure out how she could tend to both her wounded clanmates at once. She seemed instinctively drawn to her leader, until Sedge Creek gasped and blood gushed from her wound where Brambleberry had moved the paw that had staunched the bleeding. She resumed her position. It's his last life, Crooked Jaw gasped. Leopard Fur felt her heart sink into her belly. She knew that Hailstar was an old cat, but she had never thought to ask how many lives he might have left. You must. I can't, Brambleberry's blue eyes shone with grief. I can't leave. It's all right, Hailstar croaked. Such Creek needs you. Crooked Jaw crouched beside Hailstar, his gaze glittering with horror. I'm sorry, I let you down. Leopard Fur blinked at him. How could that be true? He'd fought beside the River Clan leader as fiercely as any warrior could. Hailstar struggled to focus. Lead the patrol home safely. 
His mew was so weak that she barely heard the words. Crooked Jaw pressed his paw to Hailstar's throat and flung a desperate look at Brambleberry, but the medicine cat was still fighting the staunch Sedge Creek's bleeding. No! Crooked Jaw let out an anguished wail. It seemed to send thorns into Leopard Fur's heart. She saw the River Clan leader's head loll to one side and his eyes glaze as though frost had taken him. She felt sick. Sunfish nudged Brambleberry away from Sedge Creek, snatching the cobwebs from her. I'll finish this, she began wrapping her denmate's paws as Brambleberry darted to Hailstar's side. Crooked Jaw had slumped beside him, his muzzle buried in the leader's pelt, and the medicine cat's eyes darkened as she inspected the wound on Hailstar's neck. There was nothing to be done, Brambleberry told Crooked Jaw softly. The wound was too deep to heal. This life could not have been saved. Crooked Jaw lifted his head and looked around, as though he barely knew where he was. Is Leopard Fur okay? He mewed huskily. I'm fine, Leopard Fur limped to his side. She touched her nose to Hailstar's pelt. The stillness beneath it made her shiver. Crooked Jaw straightened and looked at Sedge Creek. Sunfish sat back as the injured tabby struggled to her paws. Will you be able to make it home? He asked her. Her eyes were dull with exhaustion, but she nodded. Help her, he told Timberfur. The brown tom tucked his shoulder beneath Sedge Creeks and began to guide her toward the hole in the wall. Sunfish pressed in on the other side. Leopard Fur felt numb with shock as Crooked Jaw crouched and let Ripple Claw and Owl Fur haul the body of their dead leader onto their deputy's back. The pain of her wounds seemed far away. This must be a dream. They'd only come here for dry bedding, and now Hailstar was dead. It didn't make sense. Something felt wrong. She was supposed to save her clan. That was why Star Clan had let her live when her littermates and mother had died. How could she ever fulfill her destiny if she couldn't even save her leader? Here. Mudfur pushed a paw full of poppy seeds toward Leopard Fur's muzzle. These will help the pain. It's only a few nicks and scrapes, she croaked. And yet she could hardly lift her head and lay stiff with pain in the medicine den nest where Mudfur had settled her. Her injuries stung as though the rat's teeth had been coated with nettle juice. And yet she had been lucky. When Hailstar was not, she thought miserably. Sedge Creek was unconscious in the nest beside hers, the smell of blood still fresh on her pelt. Crooked Jaw's fur was ragged and bloody, but the poultices Brambleberry had mixed had eased his wounds enough for him to set out with the old medicine cat on the long journey to the Moonstone to receive his nine lives. He had laid Hailstar in the clearing, and the clan had gathered around him. It was as though they'd become suddenly numb to the driving rain that washed their dead leader's fur clean and battered their huddled bodies. Darkness was falling and the clan was silent. In the medicine den, leopard fur could only hear Sedge Creek's labored breathing and the swirling of the river outside. She tried to struggle to her paws. I should join the vigil. Mudfur nudged her back into the damp moss. You need to rest, he mewed. She didn't fight him. She was too weary and miserable. I should have saved him. You fought bravely, from what I hear. He nudged the poppy seeds closer. No warrior can do more than that. But you said Star Clan let me live for a reason. She looked at him hopelessly. That reason clearly wasn't to save Hailstar, Mudford told her. He was our leader, she mewed. He was old. And no cat lives forever, Mudfur mewed softly. Not even a leader. All you need to do is defend your clan. Let Star Clan take care of the rest. She met his gaze, wondering what he meant. How could she leave it to her ancestors to protect River Clan? They were dead, and she was alive. She'd failed today. But she was more determined than ever to make sure her clan never suffered again.